clouds melt into rain. Snow packs down on glaciers. Small streams feed mighty rivers, great lakes, and the sea. The earth keeps turning. China's homeland enjoys spectacular mountains and abundant waters. The varied climatic conditions shape lives and livelihoods. Let's start from the heart of things, following the amazing creatures of the high mountains, tracing the source of the rivers, and voyaging across the seasons to see the great natural glories of China. At the junction of the greater Xing'an Range and the Heilongjiang River, the average January temperature is around minus 30 degrees Celsius. The freeze lasts six months or longer. This area is home to the biggest forest and its most cold-resistant residence in China, and also enjoys the coldest and longest winter. It's at the highest latitude, with the shortest hours of winter daylight in China. China's northernmost and coldest region lies in the northeast of Asia. Here, the greater Xing'an Range extends from the southwest to the northeast, with its northern end reaching the Heilongjiang River on the Chinese-Russian border. China's largest sub-frigid forest is located in these rolling mountains. The Dayurian larch is the dominant species in the forest. Its straight trunks reach as high as 35 meters. In September, as summer passes into autumn, regions south of the Great Wall are still bathed in the warmth of the sun. But at night, the temperature in the greater Xing'an range drops to the freezing point. Reindeer are one of the species unique to the forest. This is their only habitat in China. To cope with the coming winter, the Avenki herdsmen often drive the reindeer to the forest depths, the better place to forage and shelter over the coming months. The reindeer will have to rely on themselves to survive the winter. No one will look after them. The white reindeer lichen, which can be found almost everywhere in the forest, is their main winter food. Its tiny branches are a combination of fungi and algae. It grows three to five millimeters a year. Reindeer quickly spot the lichen and find the tenderest part. When not feeding, they ruminate to absorb as many nutrients as possible. The greater Xing'an range is one of the first places in China to see winter arrive. 
The name Xing'an comes from the Manchu language, meaning an extremely cold place. In mid-September, the first snow falls in the forest. This is an important signal to the local residents to prepare for the coming eight months of winter. West of the Greater Xing'an Range, the Hulun Lake sits on the Mongolian Plateau. It feels chill of the imminent winter even earlier than the Greater Xing'an Range. It's the fifth largest lake in China. It's also the largest freshwater lake in northern China. It stretches for 93 kilometers from north to south and is 41 kilometers at its widest. It's more than twice the total land area of China's Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. In autumn, many migratory birds stop over here. The Hulun Lake is one of the northernmost breeding places for mute swans in China. These mute swans were born this year and are now five months old. They'll have to master the ability to fly long distances before the lake freezes up. By the end of October, parts of the lake have frozen up. If a strong cold front arrives, the whole lake will freeze up within days. The mute swans will starve if they stay. The whooper swans, their neighbors, are already leaving for the south. In fact, migration is not an innate ability for migratory birds. It has to be learned, and to pass this life and death test, the little mute swans will have to work hard. The following morning, encouraged by their parents, they take off again. They keep circling and then flying higher and higher. Now, they can start the long journey to the Yangtze River Basin in full confidence. In winter, the Arctic polar vortex moves southward, pushing the cold air masses from Siberia south until they reach the greater Xing'an Range. When this happens, the temperature in the forest drops to below minus 20 degrees Celsius. Everything seems to be trapped by the heavy snow. But this furry little thing has found a new way to have fun in the snow. This is a young sable. Its thick coat turns the winter cold into a time for play. Sables are among the liveliest species in the greater Xing'an range. They usually hunt under the cover of night. But due to the scarcity of prey in winter, they sometimes have to come out looking for food during the daytime. Today, it eyes the treetops, where the only other living creatures in the area are perched.
most of its other prey have left or are in hibernation. The non-migrant tits are all that's left. Unfortunately, the sable makes too much noise, and the tits fly away. Not long after, the snow stops and the sky clears. The sable comes out to look for food again. Without the cover of the falling snow, it's quite conspicuous. It moves carefully and patiently waits. Soon, it adjusts its strategy. It's determined to get a catch. What the hunter needs right now is patience and luck. Success seems so close. But the branch gets too thin and there's no way forward. In January, under the influence of cold air masses from the Mongolian Plateau, the northeastern part of Asia becomes a world of ice and snow. This is the coldest period of time in the northern section of the greater Xing'an Range, close to the Heilongjiang River. The Heilongjiang River forms the boundary river between China and Russia. Heilong literally means black dragon. But now, it has turned into a river of ice and snow. At its thickest, the ice can be over 2.5 meters deep. The minus 40 degrees Celsius temperature not only freezes all the moisture in the air, but also changes the form of the snowflakes. The flakes become small and fluffy. When the snowstorm is over, the forest stirs again. Roe deer live by the Heilongjiang River. They are shy and alert. They also have a unique dance step. It's said that this kind of step enables them to suddenly break into a gallop at any time, even in the winter chill. They live on the Usuri Shoal, the northernmost tip of China's territory. Located at 53 degrees, 33 minutes, 42 seconds north latitude, it covers an area of 50 square kilometers. It was once a frontier post in the Qing Dynasty. Seventeen kilometers to the east, the Heilongjiang River turns in a sharp bend. Interestingly, there are three adjoining peninsulas here, as the river makes an omega-shaped bend that stretches for about 30 kilometers. This is the biggest bend of the Heilongjiang River. The main interest for the roe deer at Asuri Shoal are the bean pots left lying on top of the snow. They've almost reached their physical limit in the face of the winter cold. If conditions become more extreme, they might well die of hunger or hypothermia.
as well as the roe deer, wild boars also live in the nearby forest. The Usuri boars are the largest wild boars in China. An adult boar is nearly two meters long and can weigh up to 300 kilograms. The boars have a tough skin. They are often more aggressive than tigers and bears and can be very frightening. But the deadly cold of winter is the enemy all creatures have to deal with. To protect their offspring, wild boar sows have mastered the snow clearing skill to build a makeshift camp. There, they can huddle together to keep each other warm. It's an essential survival skill. In January, the Hunlun Lake to the west of the greater Xing'an Range is completely frozen. It ices so rapidly that the stresses break the surface ice into pieces. Some pieces are scattered, some pile up, and some stand in the wind like the ruins of a disaster. They look quite shocking. The average thickness of the ice layer is two meters plus. Fresh snow accumulates on the uneven surface, creating variegated patterns on the surface of the lake. This is the largest and thickest block of ice in northern China. The vicious winter chill can freeze the entire lake within a few days. At this time every year, a great ice art exhibition is revealed. A piece of ice surrounded by snow is as smooth as a mirror and as bright as a gem. Not far away, a round ice sheet is covered in snow. One looks black, the other white. They are like yin and yang, echoing each other. On the other side of the lake, a large amount of gas has been frozen into the thick ice when the lake iced up so rapidly. It's a unique spectacle. The reindeer in the depths of the greater Xing'an range have to keep eating in order to get enough energy. Their favorite lichen is covered in snow. Every bite of it is precious. Luckily, the lichen is hardy and strong. Snow cover may prevent new growth, but it's still tasty and nutritious. The owners of the reindeer usually won't return until the following spring. Before they leave, they sprinkle some salt in one spot. The reindeer return there every once in a while. They scrape away the snow and ice and lick at their owner's gift. This is the season with the shortest hours of daylight. All the local residents have to make the most of what's available. A large number of elk also live in the snowy forest. They are much taller than the reindeer. Adult male elk carry handsome antlers even in winter. Deer are perhaps the species that can best adapt to the extreme coldness. In 1969, the temperature in Mohu, which is at the northern part of the greater Xing'an range, dropped to the record-setting minus 52.3 degrees Celsius. In February 2001, the temperature on the northwestern slopes of the greater Xing'an range 
reached minus 40 degrees Celsius for 13 consecutive days. The Hanman National Nature Reserve is over 1,000 meters above sea level. The lowest temperature recorded there was minus 49.6 degrees Celsius. The moose is the largest species of the deer family. They live in the interior of the forest. The height to their shoulders is over two meters. Around 100 moose have been recorded living in the reserve. Among the deer species, they are the best adapted to extreme low temperatures. Even in the cold of winter, there are surprises. This is a thermal spring from an underground rock fault. Located in the west of the greater Xing'an range, the running stream won't freeze even when the temperature drops to minus 30 degrees Celsius. In April, the long winter finally comes to an end. Having survived the cold winter, black-billed capercaillies start their grand performance. This male capercaillie is singing to attract a spouse. Soon, he gets a rival. Another male also starts his courtship display. Rhythm and volume may be vital for victory. But the final result depends on stamina. As it turns out, the rival is quashed. The eight-month winter is about to end. This little sable looks healthy. It seems that it has gotten through the winter unharmed. Sables usually live alone. Spring is their season of romance. This is a male sable. It has cleaned up its den and is waiting for Miss Wright. This is perhaps the forest's most moving moment. In the past, they were prey to hunters. Now, thanks to their protected status, their population has recovered. As long as you look carefully, you can find them. In late April, the ice and snow in the midsection of the greater Xing'an range starts to melt. In the northern section, the reindeer become active. The frozen Heilongjiang River won't thaw until early May. This is the northernmost border of China. Persistence is the key to surviving the winter. As temperature rises, the white mountains and black waters usher in a warm and colorful spring. <laughs> 